Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem call function with a custom context. So this one is a bit tricky and frankly, I think the description is a bit more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm just gonna focus on the example and we'll come back to the description if we really need to, but I don't think we will. So taking a look here, you can see the definition that we're given here is function prototype. So we're adding a function to the function prototype. That's obviously a little confusing. So let's see the context text in which this is actually going to be used down here. We have some function which is going to increment some variable and then return that. Now what exactly does this reference here because usually with functions that have the this keyword defined we use them to typically instantiate objects like this like with this and then whatever the name of the function happens to be in this case it's increment so something like this but obviously this is undefined right now count is undefined I mean, if we did something like this, then maybe it would work as expected because at least it's being initialized. I mean, this function does have some this context and we're just creating a member for that context. But without it, this is kind of weird. So we definitely can't construct this. And to be honest, why would you even want to write code like this? You usually probably wouldn't. But in the context of this problem, you can see here we're calling increment. And what we're trying to do is say the context this should reference reference the object that we're passing in. So when we then call increment, it's of course going to increment the count field. I mean, we could pass in additional fields here that aren't going to be used. I could pass in name and set it to a string. Well, the name is clearly not being used in the increment anyway. We could use it if we wanted to. We could you know, add something to it or whatever or print it, but we're not going to do that. But the point is that this object is going to basically replace this. So when you see the this keyword here, think of this object that we're we're passing in. I know I'm saying this a lot, but it's kind of hard not to in this problem. So that's what we're trying to implement. And of course, call polyfill is the function we're calling. And somehow in this function, we need to actually end up calling increment. Like from in here, we want to call increment in this case. Now, of course, we could define some other functions like decrement over here. And I'm just going to call it that or whatever. And then here we could replace this thing with decrement. And the point is that this call polyfill is being defined on the prototype because we should be able to call it from any function. Notice how the function isn't an object from the function. It has a member variable, which technically doesn't belong to this guy. It belongs to the prototype chain. And that's where the call polyfill is going to be invoked. So it's not like in here we can just say increment. We can't just say decrement either. We have to know somehow that we're trying to call the one that's referenced and that can be done with the this keyword just like kind of we've seen in previous problems. So in this case if I were to say this and then call this with some arguments this here is invoking increment or decrement depending on which call polyfill this was invoked from but that's not enough. We're not just calling the function we also need to apply this context that's passed in here. And for now, let's just ignore args because it's not even being used in this example because these methods, these functions don't even have any arguments. So for now, let's ignore these. But we know, of course, we are going to pass these in when we make that function call. First, before we call this, we need to apply the context. And there's actually a method in JavaScript called apply where we can literally do that. We can apply some context. In this case, it's going to be the context that's passed in. That's the object. We're just going to copy and paste it. And what this is doing is saying, call this function. But before you do that, apply this context. So when this function here is being called, it could be either of these two, the this keyword will be replaced with this object, which is exactly the object that we want it to replace. And by the way, when you decrement, it won't be two, it'll probably be zero because we're decrementing the count. That's what we want. So that's pretty much enough to actually solve these two examples. But we know some other functions might end up taking in some parameters. So there is a second argument for apply where you pass in the arguments for the this function that we're calling here if they're necessary. And you actually don't pass them with the spread operator. You do just pass them like this, like as an array. So 
Now, this will, believe it or not, solve the problem. Well, I think we might have to actually return also in this case. That's what's going on in this problem. So now I'm going to uh, first comment this out and then run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient, though it's kind of random on leak code. Now, I will say that there's one other way to solve it with binding. When you apply the context, this context is only applied for this like invocation, just a single invocation. But there's another way to apply context with the bind method. So it's similar. We say this dot bind this context and then this returns that same function with the context binded and then you can call it like this and don't ask me why in this case you need the spread operator and in this case you don't i guess this time it's actually being invoked like when we call this it's literally invoking the method whereas apply we're just passing in arguments and then under the hood apply is invoking the methods so that's probably the reasoning but you'll see that this works similarly i prefer apply because it kind of makes it straightforward that we're just using this for a single invocation and that's what we would want because remember this function is going to be called possibly from multiple functions, but I guess I'll run this code and show you that it's going to perform pretty similarly. Yep, there it is. Now, if you're still wondering what's going on here, what the hell is going on? Let me just dig a tiny bit deeper and show you. And let's use class syntax because if JavaScript is confusing for you, you've probably are more familiar with this type of syntax, but it's a very simple example. We have a class where by default, the name will be set to yeet, and then we can log that. And I'll show you very simply, we construct a person and then we print their name and we get yeet as you would expect. But now I'm going to create a wrapper function for print name and it's going to be given some context. So I'm going to call it print with context and it's going to be passed in some context. And then we're basically going to call print name one more time from in here with the this keyword because we have to because everything from in here has to be used with the this keyword. It's a requirement. It's not optional. So we're going to call this dot name, but we're actually going to say apply because before we call it, we want to apply this context. So now when I construct another person down here and I don't call print name, I call print with context and then the context I pass in probably needs to have a name attribute. Otherwise, we're probably just going to end up printing undefined. So here I'm going to give the name in this case, say it's going to be neat. So now this is going to make it very clear what's going on to you, because when we run this now, the first one still prints yeet, but the second one, we changed the context. So it prints neat. And to make it even more clear that this context change is not permanent from in here, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to save this person in a variable for a second called P. Then I'm going to say here, P print with context neat. And then right after that, I'm going to call just regular print the name and running this you see first time here we got neat the second time we got yeet still because the context change was not permanent and I could even call print with context and the context itself is the person. So this time it would literally be as if the context we passed in was still the same this keyword. So it's going to print yeet three times in a row, as you see here. So I hope that makes it crystal clear for you what exactly is going on because JavaScript is pretty crazy. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.